Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing well. So, I wanted to talk to you today about the dangers of escorting. Now, with a lot of red pill podcasts, they interview these women, but in reality, if you really look at it, they're just a bunch of little fingers, a bunch of Peter Baelishes, and it actually helps these women get more simp subs in terms of their pay pig amount. Okay, it doesn't really do a whole bunch to get women to change their pathway. And as we know, there's in the radical feminist book I've been reading, they are very sex positive, and they say that sex work is real work. The obese T.J. Kirk, the amazing atheist, pushes you know brothel culture heavily. It's a very uh, popular thing amongst the left of America. Okay. And France, who's pretty left-leaning and it's a secular liberal area, they don't allow men to have paternity testing. So they allow men to be cucked and they don't want men to know if they're actually raising children that are theirs. Okay. And so be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. So, one of the dangers of escorting is that you think you're paid to be shoulder candy or shoulder glimmer, glitter, but in reality you're flaunting your worship of money. Now, a Muslim woman is who is chaste, doesn't do that type of work, is far superior to those women even if she's not as beautiful. And greed isn't a good look for women. Obviously you want someone to be able to be a provider. But there's a point of provision and then there's a point of greed. There's a point of hoarding and there's a point of having enough for an emergency situation. Okay? Now there have been hadiths I've discussed where the real only guarantee for a Muslim is bread, water, shelter, and clothing to cover your private parts. Right? And you're not owed luxury. You're not owed a life of decadent enjoyment. And I want you to think about this hadith. Ibn Abbas and Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with them, reported, Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If a son of Adam were to own a valley full of gold, he would desire to have two. Nothing can fill his mouth except the earth of the grave. Allah turns with mercy to him who turns to him in repentance, Abu Hari and Sahih Muslim. And it really relates to humans' desire and lust for material wealth. And that having perfect faith in Islam, this can help you as a woman to realize that selling yourself is dangerous and the type of customers you will have, they may have money, but they will never truly respect you because they know what money is and they see how stupid you are to sell yourself so short and buy your way into hell. Every time you sell your body, you're purchasing your way into hell. And there's not going to be a place of enjoyment there. It's not going to be fun. It's a perpet- if you can't even escape your nightmares, what makes you think you can escape hell? And there are angels who are going to see to it that you can never escape. Bonus provisions or accessories and little delights. You can try to have your level best to get a high earning man. But there is nothing wrong with having an average man. But if you're going to start escorting yourself in hopes of earning your own money and then marrying a man of money... You're really setting yourself up for a big problem. And there are lots of women who go missing. And lots of women who, they get harmed in the process and they know they have to keep their mouth shut. They're fully aware that their customer who's been paying them can easily get rid of them. And that is not a healthy, sustainable life. And the trauma you bring on to yourself is going to rest within your mind. And a lot of these women 
they have to consistently distract themselves because they don't want the thoughts to come in their head of what they've done. All the feminist propaganda of not feeling shame, of being proud to be a harlot like Amber Rose, stuff like that. That doesn't soothe them in the moments where they feel disgust and alienation from their own bodies and what they have done. There's a better way for women to be. And Muslim women are the best women. And so you may be a young woman in a country not of America or even in America. And you see these escort women posting their reels online, going to Dubai and whatnot. And you need to understand that many of them are prostitutes, but they're not deliberately saying that because their accounts would be banned and whatnot on Instagram. So be cautious of how they glorify a lifestyle that's quite dangerous. It's quite dangerous. And a lot of those men will want you to use drugs with them. And the more drugs you use, the faster your beauty evaporates, the faster your health evaporates. And the more addicted you become, an addiction never makes you look better as a woman. And the more addiction you get, the more depravity you'll do in order to fulfill that drug need. And the more drugs that you'll need, the more money you'll need. So that means you'll do more and more depraved things in order to earn that money for the drugs. It becomes a vicious spiral down to the end. You're not really a sort of accessory to him, but rather you're like a testament to what greed does to women. And it's important for women not to be impressed with the clothing, with the makeup and the hair and the places they go to eat. Because that's not true wealth. Family is wealth. Earning a lot's pleasure is wealth. Each time a woman decides to get into the limousine or the fancy car or whatever she's being picked up in, and she goes up into the hotels or on the yacht, she's putting herself in danger. To get a disease, to be harmed, and there is always lurking a customer who wants something quite depraved and you can pretend that the men around will protect you or they respect you or they care about you but it's just not the case there'll be some who will pretend to care about you because they want to keep getting into it and they don't want to have the drama of people knowing that they paid you right they don't want you to let the cat out of the bag and ruin their reputation they don't want to be that guy who has a crazy escort causing drama in their lives. For example, Walter from Fresh and Fit, he got an escort pregnant. She aborted the kid, but she went around and caused a bunch of drama, a bunch of drama for him, and exposed him as somebody who doesn't practice what he preaches. Having unprotected intimacy uh, and then finishing inside of an escort. And then she was hacked, she was stalked, she faced many insults, she was pumped and dumped and shamed. And she looked really dumb on the Whatever podcast uh, when Andrew Wilson came at her. And there's plenty of examples, so escorting will always be dangerous no matter which way you look at it. To your physical health, to your mental health, and obviously for your soul. And so, don't fall for it when the feminists promote it as luxurious. Now, there are some more militant feminists who have like a, what do they call those French hats? A beret? A beret? I don't know how you pronounce it. And they wear like a camo jacket and they're more communist and they're not for that. And you're like, I actually respect that because they see it as a true form of oppression. But when you see the other types of feminists like Cardi B promoting it, Nicki Minaj promoting it, and encouraging mothers to do that behavior and to do that to get fame and wealth, well, understand that greed is leading you. That we humans have this extreme desire to have excessiveness. 
You know, you can have some extra. Let's say you, 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 you can, you're allowed to have multiple fancy horses, right? You just gotta make sure you give your charity. You gotta make sure that you do good unto others. But recall even the, the hadith about we shouldn't look down upon a gift even if it's a, a sheep hoof. Think about that. We are not supposed to belittle any gift. And we're consistently told that the life of this world is glitz and glamour and fleeting. Now let us know when we'll return to Allah and how you die is how you'll be raised. You don't want to have that shame on your obituary that the last thing you were doing was sleeping with a pot-bellied weirdo and doing things that you wouldn't want uttered. Sin is something that you wouldn't really want known when you really look at it in a deep spiritual sense. And if you're proud of that shame and you're proud of that sin, that's even worse. Because in order to sincerely repent, you have to feel the shame. It's a dangerous game, and it's not worth it to let strange men do stuff to you so that you can have a retarded Chanel bag, makeup, and then like certain vacations. It just doesn't make sense. All it takes is one time for a man to lie to you or forge some medical papers and you're going to have some type of super gonorrhea. You're going to have some type of genital warts. And you can get multiple STDs. And if you look at the horror genre, they show you a lot what happens to those women too. Even in popular cinema, what is it? Narcos. Netflix's Pablo Escobar Narcos. There was one woman who was a lady of the night, we'll be polite and say that, and they r worded her because they thought she was a spy, which she was, and they turned the music up loud and they heard her. Even in older shows, The Sopranos, uh, one of the maid guys got one of the strippers pregnant and he beat her face into the railing and he knew that was his kid and it eliminated them both. And so what's fascinating is, or the show, the young men are using a lot of the American psycho guy for their memes. Now the American psycho guy, he that's a really horrible movie and he was able to really harm the women and do terrible things to them and one of one of the one of the uh, women was he he put her head in a in the refrigerator, you know, and left it there. And so young men are using that guy on their feeds to kind of show how little they care about women and in reality we know they still long for women and some of them because they're so socially awkward will pay women and be mindful of that type of mindset that's out there the solution isn't oh let's normalize it so that no one hates those women the solution is don't participate in that don't participate in it no matter what You'll never escape those types of wicked men. It's impossible. Because this earth is filled with suffering. This earth has evil. And one of the number one evil acts men do involves intimacy. Or wording that depraved things they do. Watch enough true crime. You will see the wide range of things that men have done to women of all ages. From babies to old ladies. I have read the news stories, watched the documentaries, everything. Watched the interrogation videos, all ranges. If they don't have mercy on regular women, you putting yourself at their mercy alone with them for, a, for money that they dangle in front of you, that's, that's pretty dangerous. Very dangerous. And your greed is leading you astray.
materialism will lead you to a dark path. And the cultist feminist witches will lead you down a dark path of materialism. Because they value money over all else. They don't have honor. They don't have it. They don't even know what it looks like because their faces are gray with shame. Okay? You need to be weary. You need to be weary. You need to purify your heart and change that path. Obviously, there's more gruesome details we could say of that lifestyle, but I'll leave it up to your imagination and others to narrate it. But it's just a friendly reminder because we see it being pushed now. It's heavily pushed. And it's quite sad. Let me know what you think. And remember, my mom did that work. Didn't work out well for her. Years of it. Even had to do it when she was pregnant with me. That's not a good life. And she was the fancy kind, so you imagine. Some girls, they overestimate their value. They think, oh, I look average, so I look like the girl next door, so I can charge this. It's just not the way it works. There's always going to be that one director, that one customer, one producer. They're going to go far beyond what you expected, and you'll feel obligated and stuck. And you won't do anything, and then you'll just be disgusted with yourself. It's interesting how Google will hide, and some people don't report on, as much as they should, the amount of women who unalive themselves from that industry who do that for a living. You'd be quite surprised and how dangerous the men are around them. It's a dirty place, a dirty field. And it will always be that way because it's an industry that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. It's an action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. If Allah would command flogging for fornication and the death penalty for adultery, what makes you think you're not going to have some type of spiritual consequences and real world consequences for engaging in behavior that destroys souls and ruins society? You can't ever really get pleasure from that, regardless of how many retarded purses you have in your walk-in closet, how many perfumes you have. I can spray a pig with perfume, it's still won't be a pig. Be mindful. The women who encourage you to that behavior don't care about you. And the men who encourage you to that behavior want to destroy you. Andrew Tate, when he was doing that line of work, that's how he made his first million. And now he makes money from mocking those women. Think about that. He made money from both. Making them, and then when he scorns them for what he made, he makes even more money. The men will destroy you and then laugh as you are ruined. And there are lots of occultist women, if you were to call on them because you followed their behavior, they will say, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't tell you to cheat. I didn't tell you to do this. You know, I told you to get that money, but I ain't gonna help you. I got my own thing going on. They'll leave you in the lurch. And that's what shaitan does. He leads you astray. When the wrath of Allah arrives, he runs away farting, and that's it. You're on your own. No one can bear the burdens of another. Shaitan's not going to bear your burdens. You will be held accountable for that. Remember, and the people who encourage you that behavior, they can't save you from Allah's wrath. No one can escape what they have earned and what they put forward. Be wise, and be mindful, and paradise is worth more than this world. Think about what I've said. If you'd like to read more about what I've written, you can go to www.subscribestar.com slash mental Help see you there.